This is Control Structure, episode 134, for September 17th, 2017. Big week to everyone listening. This show has notes. Visit thenexus.tv slash cs134 to see them. I'm your host, Stephen Orvis, and with me is the other host, Andrew Billy. Hi, Andrew. Arr! It, 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 it must be some special day that you're talking like that. I Tuesday be International Talk Like a Pirate Day, so I'm getting me practicing in. There you go. You get your practice in, and you can get a Krispy Kremes, and I'll be on their case for not giving you a box of donuts. Although those greedy landlubbers apparently ain't doing that no more. Yes, that's what I heard. So, so you still show up though and talk to them or something, and let them know that you know, hey, we like that. But it actually... only, but it only be good for very short sentences, because I'm kind of getting dry now. I'm kind of starting to sound like a Scotsman, not a pirate. <laughs> I, uh, I guess Long John Silver's, though, uh, you go there, and, uh, let's see, what is it you get? Oh, I think you get a deep-fried tr- Twinkie for free, I think, if you, you know, do that kind of thing. Hmm, well, the nearest one is, like, down in Cannonsburg, or, well, used to be in Cannonsburg. Uh, oh, yeah, I remember that one. Ironic- I was in there a couple of times. <laughs> Ironically, I think that's a Dunkin' Donuts now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I know what they closed. It was because I was in there, and like one no time... one was in there. Yeah, no one was in there, and they would take forever to order. And, like, one time they literally forgot my order, and I was sitting on the bench in front of the counter. And, like, half an hour later, the lady's like, did we take your order? And I'm like, yes, like, half an hour ago? <laughs> yeah, I was... Anyways. <laughs> but I liked it because it was quiet. I'd go there and I'd read. And you know what? I When I was reading, I didn't really care if it was slow. I, I did appreciate it when they actually had my order. Like, that, to me, made yeah. a difference. Like, it was nice to actually be working on it, not like, did we take your order yet? And I was like, <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I've waited for half an hour. I was patient. I was really patient with you guys. <laughs> anyway, they did get my order, and I, I did eat, and it was okay, but maybe I wasted half an hour of my life. So, on my deathbed someday, I'll think back, and be like, you know that, that half hour I wasted? Long John Silver's and took it from me. <laughs> so, anyways, so how have you been, Andrew? Uh, so it's it's been okay. <clears throat> Let's see, the podcast schedule of late has been kind of weird, but oh well, we can yeah. do things for pirates. But uh, yeah, so uh, since we were recording this on the weekend, well, uh, it's Saturday night, and I've uh, done a. Uh, you know, done my normal biking for today, like 23 miles or so. Uh, did that last Saturday and Sunday, and I'm probably going to do it again tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, last Sunday I filled up my grill and like you know made a whole bunch to eat like I normally do, and ended up with a uh, mountain of steak uh, in my fridge. Mountain of steak. Yeah, like I had marinated them and you know put them on. It was. It, you know they're pretty great. I, I remember you saying you were going to get into doing steaks because you haven't uh, hadn't really done too many of them. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll have to come visit again sometime. Yeah, um, you know, let's. I guess we can take this back to uh, our you know original purpose in life, being the food show. <laughs> That's right. I forgot about that. I was that was a pretty good show. We we should definitely do one well, again the, sometime. The, the cooking show. Cooking uh, show. Yep. But but uh, you know definitely. Uh, you know, like even before then, like this show was known as the food show because me and Chris, uh, Utah Chris, would always uh, be talking about food. Uh, <laughs> it's a good topic. Yeah. So, uh, so like I, ha- you know, had like all this marinade from the steaks, and then what I did was I poured them over like the two ho- two dozen hot dogs I had in there. So, like, now, like, my mm-hmm. hot dogs kind of taste like the steak now. Oh, nice. That, w- that would make for good hot dogs. Yeah. So, like, uh, what I what I did was, uh, I believe it was, like, uh, two cups of oil and about two cups of vinegar. Uh, then mix in, like, four or five tablespoons of garlic uh, or, no, uh, oregano, basil, and, like, maybe a little less garlic. Uh, and also some hot sauce. Because whenever I, whenever like uh, 
I do anything with garlic in it. I always think that the garlic needs a little bit of a kick to it. Hot sauce makes a lot of things good. Yeah, just just a little bit. You know, I still yeah. you know want the garlic to be in there, and uh, you know, of course, the uh, Cajun casserole as well. So yeah, like my my grill was entirely full. Nice. So like the steaks were in there for like a good uh, like forty minutes, forty five minutes or so, and like they still came out kind of medium. So. Yeah, like I'm I'm not sure of, you know, if you use like a, a gas grill, like what like what the timing of the cooking is on that, but like, you know, these uh these wood pellet grills, like you just put it on there and like it just stays moist no matter what. I wonder what uh so you said you're just saying you think you can cook them longer and, and it doesn't really impact them. Yeah. Hmm. So, Interesting. Like I uh, I tend to like like my steaks maybe a little bit more than medium, like maybe medium well, but they uh, they were still pretty good. And it's the second time I've actually done steaks, so um, like I pretty much whenever uh, uh, Giant Eagle has a buy one get one free uh, meats and like their steak there, mm-hmm. like yeah, I'll buy like sixty dollars worth of steak for thirty, like no <laughs> questions. So. Uh, like the last time I went, I got four more steaks, and so I have like eight in my freezer because I had some left over. So nice, yeah. Anyways, uh, getting off from the mouth drooling, so I'm gonna be. Uh, uh, remember, Mister Subway. Mister Subway, uh, would that be the guy at Subway? Yes, the the owner. Oh, the one that you you turned on the data and filled out his app his uh, survey for him. Uh, yeah, like he knows your name. Yeah, like he's your friend and and all that. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he he's been kind of missing me lately because I haven't really been there like too much in the past two weeks. Um. So yeah, you know, this past week was my grilling. The week before, I had went over to uh, like some uh, church member's house for uh, Labor Day, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, I did my casserole for that. Uh, but they also uh, had like leftover burgers, so I took those and was eating those that week. There you go. So, so yeah, like I've been saving so much by not uh, spending it at Mister Subway. Probably his his rate, store ratings going way down, and he's getting in trouble from his managers. And he's like, <laughs> "You haven't had many good reviews this week. You better better get some so, up higher." <laughs> so, like the only reason I'm going to Subway in these weeks is to actually like eat vegetables. So, uh, like I go Tuesday for the chicken sub and then like sometime else for like a veggie patty sub so I can get like a lot of veggies. And veggies are good for you. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, so this... it l- looks like you have a, a special gun here. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of pirates, I just realized I, I went to a gun show like two weeks ago and I walk in like one of the first tables I walked up to, a guy has a gun. Uh, it's a kick gun, but it's not quite finished, but it does function. And uh, like it was like, really cheap. What's that? It looks like a flint lock or it's something? A cap, it's a cap lock, actually. Kind of similar, though. Uh, but yeah, it's a cap lock muzzle loading pistol, which kind of looks like your traditional classic pirate gun. So yeah, I was like really cheap. I was like, uh, okay, <laughs> that would be fun to shoot. So anyways, yep, I did that. And then today, uh, our, our church camp has... Uh, had a men's retreat and so i was up there i took it up there shooting it and stuff and so it was lots of fun so yeah speaking of pirate guns i have i have a pirate gun kind of oh that's cool so uh hey while we're talking about ships let's talk about a very different kind of ship uh like a spaceship or to be specific a space probe uh cassini uh has been orbiting saturn for 13 years or it was until last friday morning when it was purposefully uh steered into saturn and disintegrated so have you noticed, so uh goodbye cassini have you noticed nasa has a thing about like driving probes into planets yeah it's like they're you know running some kind of extraterrestrial you know destruction derby or something yeah it's like here's tax tower dollars go drive into that planet <laughs> but oh like do a few years of science before then please yeah yeah I'm, I'm I'm sure they gathered gather research from it, and it was end of life. Yeah. Uh, speaking of life, uh, the reason they did that is you know they don't want to take any chances of this 
like inaptive probe crashing into places where they think there might be life. And so, kill like that one last alien that's out there that or no. or or rather contaminate uh, these places with you know possibly contaminate uh, with Earth life. Mm, nah, that's a good point. So yeah, apparently NASA thinks that pretty much every moon out there has an underground ocean of some kind. Hmm. You know, uh, let's see. I came I came across a, a comment that you know essentially said it's like why does everything have to like be about you know searching for life and stuff? Yeah, that does seem to be their driving motiv- motivator. I think yeah. that comes from uh, evolution and that they want to prove it and. Hey, it should happen other places too. <laughs> oh, geez, will you get over it, will you? Life, life, life. How living centric of you. Check your alive privilege. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm joking about that part. <laughs> but surely there must be a few good reasons to explore space besides whatever it has to do with life and mm-hmm. support thereof. It is is an ocean of liquid methane not interesting in its own right? <laughs> that could be useful. I mean, you could if you could somehow get the methane here, and we could burn it. Like that could be kind of nice. Yeah, if if uh, you know if NASA said that there was lots of oil on Mars, we'd be there tomorrow. Oh yes. Oh, that that is that is really true. I I, I would see that now. Say there's oil rigs up there. They've got the pipeline going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get that and then, oil, and then Trump's gonna make Mars great again. Okay. <laughs> Section three: Structure. The most common pirate verb is to be, as in the singular, "This grog be warm," or the plural, "These apples be rotten." Note the sentence structure with the noun always before the adjective. That there be a buxom wench. Is wrong. That there wench be buxom. Is correct. Here is an example of conjugating tenses. The past. I be plundering. The present. I be plundering. And the future. I gonna be plundering. Raspberry. 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 Yay! So, uh, speaking of Mars, uh. You know how they have the rovers that drive around Mars and how they can remote control them and take pictures, take samples with an arm and things like that? Uh, yeah, definitely. Have you ever wanted your own rover that you could drive around on Earth and explore with? Um, sometimes. Now you can, with Turtle, your own personal rover. Uh, so apparently it's Raspberry Pi powered, and they've open sourced a lot of the the, like the hardware and whatever that they've done with it. And so it's a Kickstarter, actually. We haven't had one of those for a while, so we have an actual Kickstarter. Uh, and uh, they basically uh, you have your phone and you control your rover and drive it around, take pictures, and, and they have attachments. And it sounds like they're really catering to the, the do-it-yourself kind of. You can add in things or electronics. I can see this great for doing people doing research with like uh, uh, t- autonomous cars and things like that that would be really great you could plug in a module that has maybe a brain on it or something or extra sensors a brain uh, yeah a brain <laughs> more 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 brainy yeah hey, we yeah we take these we take these mouse brains and we plant them on the <laughs> river and then and it goes around and it like runs at the cheese we don't know why yet that we kind of work the bugs out and we trade at <laughs> the cheese thing anyways uh anyways so if you if you have an extra thousand dollars uh, you can you can pre-order one of these river things. Really neat toy, but I was like, that would be fun, but not a thousand dollar toy. Nope. <laughs> maybe maybe someday when it's a lot cheaper. Uh, other things that I thought of doing with a Raspberry Pi before was actually to make like a security camera. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And I th- I thought about it before, and I one thing I thought was I kind of need like backing software and stuff for the camera because I. I don't really want to log in SSH and jump in the terminal and go look at things. I mean, that's cool and all, but not really day-to-day stuff. Apparently, there is a uh, is a is software for that. And I found an article. This guy was making a night vision Raspberry Pi. He had a camera that has LED lights on it and stuff, or presumably the infrared uh, on it, and so you can see the dark. But at the bottom of the article, he has a link to a software project that makes like an official. Uh, motion camera that like uploads the pictures to a certain directory and, and things like that. So that that was kind of neat to find. Uh, I do see that as being useful someday, maybe making a bunch of Raspberry Pi Zeros and chaining them together and making like a 
some sort of a security camera network. So is this like a specifically an uh, in- infrared camera? That was my assumption since it says night vision. Uh, you can see all the, in that picture there, you can kind of see all the, the LEDs that's on that there. Uh, most of the yeah. time when people say night vision, they mean infrared. But uh, this here, this here, uh, this here, light source add-on for Raspberry Pi camera module, including infrared. Uh, so that does sound like what it is. Because yeah. the Raspberry Pi camera does see infrared. Uh, I, You know how when you take your remote control and uh-huh. you can kind of shine at your camera and you can see stuff? Uh-huh. Uh, that's that's the deal there. So uh, the Pi camera can see that. So so with this add-on, it's I don't know if it's just like a oh it's probably just like a shield that goes around it and then it's making the the light source for it. Uh-huh. This would be make a neat uh, uh, neat trial camera. I thought different times of having if kind of you get the solar panel fixed up and the battery source so it's can infinitely run uh-huh. and then you just have it whether it's Wi-Fi or maybe a data network like Wi-Fi chain. Uh, and then you can just take your pictures and uh, of like deer or whatnot and push them up. And then, then like deer, deer season, you got this whole network that it, when a deer moves, we know it's at. Yeah, you're kind of like the NSA of the woods. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it looks like Apple had an event. I guess there was a podcast that I don't really care about. Wait, we have an Apple cast. Yeah, like uh, let's see. I don't think it was actually like the Apple show, like PodKit or whatever we have now. It was a just regular ne- Nexus special. Okay. So, yeah, it looks like they introduced, like, two new phones or something, and one of them is, like, all glass, like the Samsung phones. So I heard about someone was saying that the, the face of it's all touchable or something. Yeah. It, anyways... So I uh, remember uh, our uh, Google stuff from last time. I do remember the Google stuff. Do you Google the Gab. I I don't know if I talked about the podcast or not, but I do. I have heard about Gab. Yeah. So uh, Gab was uh, kicked off of the uh, Google Play Store, and Gab has decided to sue Google uh, over antitrust concerns, which. Uh, kind of seems uh you know they might have a case here you know seeing as uh uh like how google is like completely in charge of android and it is the majority of the market that's you know uh you know google is you know locking them out of uh like a lot of users uh but then on the contrary google uh banned them for like hateful content for like uh, white supremacists and stuff using their uh, their network, uh, but on the flip side, like Twitter has those people. Twitter even has terrorists, uh, but you know no one is going around uh, removing uh, Twitter's apps from uh, their stores. So and I, it would the other it would be absurd to you know equate uh, or at least you know sort of infer approval of these views. Uh, you know, on the platform just by you know virtue of them being there. I was saying the other side of this too is the the deal that they were saying that Google and Twitter has together. So that's that's their their uh, legal aspect. Of they're saying that Google has interest in Twitter doing well versus Gab not doing well. Exactly. It was interesting at the the bottom of the article. Uh, they were talking about that the the court documents though less written for a judge the author of the article was speculating and he was thinking that maybe is actually aimed at uh free advertising so you 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 know blow this really big get the media in on it accuse google and all this because people like you know hateful things and talking about things like that like it just people love that stuff yeah. so get, get all the hype build up and then then get get famous and forget about google you know yeah make their money so who does Uh, so i mean i guess google probably uses c since like they're doing a whole lot of linux stuff probably uh i don't use it but i at least know what main is or do i so uh you know how you have you know like the remain function that you Mm -hmm. know takes a few arguments and at least in the uh, case of Hello World, you know, print something out to uh, to the console. So this guy decided to maybe play around with that uh, because apparently the uh, 
GCC compiler uh, uh, says that, you know, main is usually a function. So it's like, well, what other kinds of main are there? And eventually he boils it down to a uh, an int array. Which is downright neat. The whole concept of the main not having to be a function that they wrote it that way. That's, that's just really cool because that, I don't know, a lot of interesting things. Yeah. So, um, I think we've, uh, poked at, uh, Nginx before. Uh, it's a, uh, web server. So, you know, about Apache and IIS presumably, right? Mm-hmm. So Nginx is like probably the third most used web server. I've noticed it seems to be famous for being a proxy and more just like a, a dumb dumb server from what I've seen. Yeah, like a reverse proxy. Exactly. Uh, so apparently it's uh, it also has a sort of side project or something called Unit, uh, which is an application server. So this is uh, sort of more along the lines of like .NET in IIS, you know, where you can actually, mm-hmm. you know, like store state on sessions and like process database transactions. Uh, so uh, it looks like uh, Unit is trying to do that, but allows a whole bunch of languages uh, on it. Was I misinterpreting it? Or I was kind of getting the feeling that this is another another container-like layer, just the feeling I was getting from it. Yeah, from from what I get, that's exactly what an application server is. So, like, you put your, uh, you know, like, whatever, your bundle of code on this uh, server, and, like, it'll live there. Mm-hmm. So, and, like, it'll, it's essentially like an EXE, but for a web server. Yep. Containers are big now. It's That's the future. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Java was all over this like 15 years ago. <laughs> uh, but more I, on that later. You were going to say something? Uh, yeah, I was a, a kind of a Java wagon. I was going to say, I've noticed as my company's gotten into cloud stuff, I have kind of gotten the sneaky feeling that most of this cloud stuff has been pioneered with Java stuff. I've, I've just noticed that. Because the .NET Core, like .NET Core 2.0 was released like a few weeks ago. And... <laughs> Just stuff like that. I've, I just noticed that. Yes. Anyways, Windows and .NET Core. Speaking of .NET Core and Linux. Well, and speaking about Windows. So, you know how uh, a long time ago that, uh, you know, we were all getting excited because uh, Linux was coming to Windows? Yes. And then I found out I had to boot into Windows and I stopped being excited. <laughs> so, uh I was uh, finally curious about how to actually do that. And so I looked it up, and apparently it's more or less a two-step process. Uh, you need to open up PowerShell in administrator mode, run this sort of obscure command that I wouldn't even have guessed. Uh, then like go into your update and security uh, settings and switch it to developer mode, and then you can run Bash which will automatically install Ubuntu for you. So did it work for you? It did. So nice. like, I was just at work, you know, doing, you know, uh, I think it was like in between projects or something that I'm like, you know, this might be actually be useful at some point. Yes. So, uh, you know, I decided, okay, I guess I might want to do this since I have Windows 10 at work. So went ahead and did that and, oh, this is great. And because... Uh, like the internet at our office got upgraded like a month or two ago mm-hmm. that uh, like downloading all these packages is not a pain in the butt. <laughs> One thing I noticed right off the bat when I was thinking about this, like as far as a work computer goes, uh, right now if I want to run like Linux Docker containers, I have to go jump in a VM and go run them from there. But if they could like natively running in this shell, this Ubuntu shell, that would be really awesome. Because then I can spin up all these containers and, and do things with them and not have to go go and mess around with my VM. Yeah. And uh, it appears that you can also run an X server on this. So you can have graphical Linux applications running as well. That, that's pretty neat stuff. Yeah. So, and uh, I was also poking around and actually saw someone who got hired at Microsoft. And he's apparently a Linux guy. 
and like he was getting all excited about uh, working on this, or at least uh, you know like investigating it a little bit mm-hmm. deeper. He sounds like he was poking at it and uh, giving it a good run. There, he said he was uh, fuzzing it with Linux commands, and uh, it sounds like he thought that they had a good bit of the commands implemented. The one flaw he was noticing though was that the whole Linux loves a lot of tiny files things doesn't yeah. quite fit well with Windows, and so he was noticing that was a a problem. Yeah, and. You know, I've noticed that too, you know, even copying lots of small files <laughs> that, uh, three days. Yeah. It's, it's like, like two, what? It's only, two it, hours. it's only like three gigabytes. Like, why is it taking three days? Uh-huh. Exactly. Messes with the estimating too. It's horrible estimating those tiny files. Yeah. Like once, once you get to about, you know, like maybe 500 K files or like a megabyte files, like that's where like Windows does okay, which is uh, pretty odd because uh, uh, at least on Linux, like the boot process, you know, it reads in that image first, like one huge file off the drive, uh, whereas Windows, you know, loads all the tiny little files at boot, mm-hmm. like directly off the drive. So uh, Oracle abandons Solaris uh, mostly and lays off most of the dev staff. So it looks like, uh, at least in Oracle terms, a reduction in force uh, of of most of the uh, the Oracle develop, or at least the uh, Solaris development staff. It doesn't feel like the right thing to do because you have talented people there, and you just blanket said, "Up, oh, you're all fired." And it's so, but I, but then again, like no one uses Solaris hardly. Well, I get that. I'm just saying. Like that's taking no no account to the fact that you have talented people that you might be able to use other areas. True. You fire them. It, but then, like Oracle is like a big evil company. So. Yeah. So what was the other? You may be familiar with it. I noticed the one tweet there. Someone had compared Oracle with another another company that did a similar thing and said, uh, "It was getting, ah, I'm trying to find it here." Uh, he had said, "You know, how, we compare how this one works with the other one." It's I was getting the feeling. That he was saying that there was another company that did something similar, but they didn't fire people. I load that comment there, but Twitter's down. Wait, right there's backup. <laughs> oh, it says that the contrast this week between how HPE, so it must be HP, and Oracle yeah. have disposed of unwanted software is educational. So that's why I'm, I'm wondering if uh, HP did something similar as well. I'm not exactly sure what, what that would be referring to. Oh, well, huh. past week. I'm doing quick Google in past week. Uh, end of life server to them. I don't really see anything obvious. Oh, well. Anywho. Hey, we mentioned Java back there. Uh, we did. It, it looks like Oracle has completely abandoned the Java Enterprise Edition, uh, at least as far as like uh, like running the process of improving it, and it has given it over to the Eclipse Foundation. So to enlighten me who have only made a a uh, very, very crude things in Java. The Java EE is that equivalent to the .NET framework, and it's just saying that that would be the, the continued so, development of it as now. So there's like a few uh, things about Java. There's the Java SE, which is like the, the virtual machine and like some libraries and stuff. It's what uh, the applets run on top of and like any kind of desktop... Uh, uh, you know, Java programs, uh, like for instance, Minecraft. The Enterprise Edition is like all the uh, server stuff, so servlets, uh, Enterprise Java Beans, uh, stuff like that. Okay, so the servlets were, or those, what they sound like, more like server related things. Uh, pretty much. Okay. So you know, things that would actually be run on internal business systems that, Hence... like, you know, like normal users would not be interacting with. Like, so hence the name Enterprise. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, at least at least uh, you know, like server based stuff. That is. Um, so uh, this this was pointed out to me uh, just just now, and I've been using this for like over ten years. That uh, like the Eclipse Foundation uh, was founded in large part by IBM. Uh, hmm. So. Uh, whereas, like, you know, Java was being developed by Sun, uh, you know, Sun Microsystems. So uh, IBM was hoping to eclipse 
the sun microsystems <laughs> okay okay that's funny yeah i like, never knew that before yeah like it's i've been using this for 10 years and never connected those dots <laughs> that's great um so uh it looks like uh java ee has uh been on uh, uh has been on github for quite a while so like this is where Glassfish is being uh, run from, for instance. So, you know, hopefully with this, uh, we can get uh, a little bit faster iteration on things. Because, like, for the past five years, Java has essentially, like, not done anything much. Whereas, like, all of these uh, JavaScript frameworks have proliferated. Uh, .NET has become open source. Mm-hmm. And a lot of other Microsoft things have become open source. Uh, Visual Studio went free, so you know oh, the Community Edition. So, they still keeping their the good pro stuff. Yeah. Uh. So in in this uh, move towards openness, uh, IBM has also moved their Java Virtual Machine to the Eclipse Foundation as well. Nice. So like that that was actually pretty recent. Like in the past, uh, you know, like looking on the uh, commit log here on GitHub. Uh, like the first initial commit was on the twelfth, so this is like in the past week or so. So uh, it looks like we need to talk about Equifax. Yes, Equifax. The uh... <laughs> so so Equifax uh, for those uninitiated uh, is the is a very large credit reporting bureau, or was or something. Um, not sure because they got hacked like massively. And when we're talking about massively, we're talking about like 150 million people's information has been leaked. You know, stuff not only like their addresses, their credit ratings, uh, like their jobs and other like sensitive financial data, but also things like social security numbers. And when you compare that against 300 million people in the U.S., that was half of the U.S. So your chances are like... One and two of so, being affected. So if you're not a kid, if you have a job, if you have like a credit, <laughs> if you have like any kind of banking details, chances are yeah. you're in this. Yep. Um, I, I've been reading. I don't know if you've done any to Andrew. From what I've seen, everyone's saying that the best thing to do is just lock your history. Yeah. Uh, and But the ironic thing is you have to pay the credit reporting agencies like 5 or $10 to lock your history. Yeah. So it's like, so I'm going to go have to pay Equifax $5 to lock my history because they goofed up. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this uh, has, this vulnerability uh, was actually a, uh, the exploit was through a known, uh, uh, through a known vulnerability, but it ha- had a patch available, but it was not applied. So update your stuff. Yeah. So it looks, is... it looks like uh, some of their executives are stepping down as well. So uh, another thing that they did is uh, like they put up a website where you could uh, check to see if you were in the breach. Uh, but I... apparently if you did that, uh, like there was like terms that said you forfeited the right to do a class action lawsuit against them. There was a way you could undo that, that you could like send them a letter through the mail or something crazy like that. Yeah. Yeah. So... Let's just assume that everyone everyone was in it mm-hmm. and act accordingly. Yep. It was interesting. The article there uh, was mentioning that you found, Andrew, the, about the possibilities of maybe it was a, another nation or something rather than just run-of-the-mill criminal hacking network. Right. It's, it's hard to know, but that is an interesting, interesting perspective there. So I would not be surprised if this kills Aquifax. It probably should kill them because i mean that's irresponsibility i mean i i I get that people make mistakes and things like that but on the other hand that's a lot of data and that's very important that that's not be leaked and now it's been leaked yeah and uh like you know again this is a very you know how should say obvious thing where if you have a lot of sensitive data like really a lot of sensitive data that makes you a target. So yeah. if there's some way that you can do your stuff without having a whole lot of sensitive data in one place, that would be good. Yeah. 
So, uh, you know, maybe, maybe a long shot that this will uh, cause social security numbers to not be used in the way that they are being used. That would be good because they're kind of being abused. That's not what their original intention was. And yeah. I, I haven't looked at it for a while. I want to say someone told me once that actually there was originally, they like spell it out in the law someplace that they were not to be using as an ID. I want to yeah. say there was something about that. Yeah. And uh, like a whole lot of conspiracy theorists and like conservatives and stuff, you know, they're saying it's like they are absolutely opposed to a national ID card. Well, do you have a social security <laughs> card? Then you yeah. have a national ID card already. Basically, yep. Um, so it seems that uh, you know, you know, if you need to do like anything uh, financial or like anything kind of sensitive, that like it, you know, your social security number is you know asked. You'll you need to provide that. Uh, but it sounds like what it really should be is public key cryptography. Now, how to go about actually implementing this is like a whole other can of worms. So that, I, I was thinking about that. The only problem with that, though, is when I, when a server, let's see here, when a server has my public key and they want to authenticate if it's me, I have to give them my private key, right? So no, no. It okay. Would, you know the is it the prime? You give them the prime, the multiplication of the two together, and then they can divide it or something, and they so, can verify. That's how it was. So, like, the way I would be imagining it is, like, you'd have, you know, your private key and then your public certificate or whatever. You know, the public one, you know, goes out to anyone who wants it. And then if someone wants to verify that, then they will send you a challenge. And then you will encrypt it with your private key, ah. send it back, and then they will use your public key against that a message and they will get the challenge they sent back. Uh, there you go. That would work. So you just have to have to train people to do this challenge, yeah. send encrypt thing in their minds. Yeah, that that would be like the tough part. And I know. Like people, you lose things all the time. We're gonna make this chip that we're gonna implant in the brains that they can plug in and then push the button, and or just like put all this data in their mind and do. I'm sure everyone would go for that. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, or like have people print off QR codes and like put them in like a lockbox or something. Mm -hmm. And then like if they need something, you know, challenged, then like they'll scan that with their phones because like people lose everything except their phones. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's that's true. You could you could have the QR codes. That would be a great way to store the data. And then if you had the app, you just have to make sure the app was secure and didn't like save the save the data on the QR code. You just have to make sure that aspect's secure. Yeah. Um, but so. those are ch challenges that could be... If you... You almost need it to make it absolutely secure. It would be a way, a process by which you could rotate it so that when you think it may have been compromised, you can just kind of rotate it and change it. Yeah. Like some sort of a backup key or something? A backup key or even if it was... You know how those the this uh, multi-factor authentication... Uh -huh. Systems how they have like the key fob or whatever you push and it gives you a new number every time. Mm -hmm. Something like that. True, but uh the thing about that is is that like that's only used for one party. So like you can't have like one public key fob code or something that someone could authenticate against. So, you know, due to the way, you know, it's essentially a one way hash that that works off of. So like you know, you would need to have like one of those, uh, you know, key fobs from like every bank you do business with, mm -hmm. and every government agency you do business with, and so forth. Like it, it has to be separate, and you can't exactly combine that because We're that's some, software. Be, yeah, because well, even even then, like you're you know asking people to have something for everyone they do business with. It got my data, <laughs> so. I don't know, man. This is this is hard. Yeah, yeah, it is. Let me just go get our horse and buggy and get the muzzle litter and you know, just 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 off in the woods someplace. And yeah, let, hey, I have a, have the credit history. <laughs> yeah, uh, let me get my straw hat and beard. Okay, okay, okay. Don't forget the suspenders. You yep. gotta have the suspenders. Yep. So 
Uh, if you'd like to uh, submit feedback on this podcast, you can do so on thenexus.tv. And uh, don't forget to update your stuff. And also, today is International Backup Awareness Day. So back up your stuff, update your stuff, and do everything with your stuff. And check your credit history to find out how bad it is. Yes. So, um, yeah. International Talk Like a Pirate Day. <laughs> um, that, uh, I'm not... I'm not sure how annoying uh, I will be, but uh, or how long it will last that I can actually keep up the thing. So, but uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, see, so, yeah, nothing really, nothing much is going on for like the, the uh, next two weeks or so, except work and uh, like not not even exciting work. Like we're not even going to release uh, any sites. We used to have some warm weather here and get catch some bike rides in there at least least although ironically it's it's been warmer this weekend like before the before what was left of the hurricane blew through it was like nice and like 70 degrees maybe but now it's been like 80 what was it was when the hurricane was coming through it felt it was kind of cold some of those days yeah. but today was was kind of like a nice a uh, nice weather it wasn't too too hot but it did get a little hot i got a little sunburn actually just being out in the sun today really Mm -hmm. so yeah like i pretty much wear sunscreen as like standard issue yeah probably if i did that that would help yeah but then it also makes you smell like you're going to the pool (laughs) this is true this is true so yeah like i'm looking at the forecast now and it's going to be clear and 80 for like the next week like no rain at all like I, w- I wonder how long this dry spell is going to last well, winter's gotta come eventually with it it will bring snow uh, uh, maybe <laughs> we hardly got any snow last winter remember I, I do remember that that was kind of annoying for deer season because it's like you hit one and then you try to track it and then you find a red leaf and you're like blood no it's a leaf <laughs> it makes it tougher to find them so uh yeah, I still see the rabbits. I still see the chipmunks. Mm-hmm. Um, so, if you remember where the uh, Mexican restaurant is near me, uh, I I remember the Mexican restaurant, but I don't remember where it is. Okay, like, do you remember a hill behind it? I, I do remember a hill behind it. Yeah. Yeah, like on that road up towards those uh, like uh, apartments that. Uh, Let's see, it was like one day this past week I was driving home and like there was a whole bunch of turkeys, like six turkeys, like each on one side of the road. Oh, nice. Yeah, they they are very ugly birds. <laughs> they taste pretty good, though. So, although I'm not exactly sure how city turkeys would taste. Yeah, I, I don't know, because you got to wonder what they've been eating there. I guess that's it, right? Yep. So yeah. have a good one. You too. You too.